Hey guys, we are on site today in one of my projects where we're actually building a network into this house, including ceiling mounted access points, a rack in the basement. So I thought it'd be beneficial to take a little tour with you guys while the boards and cabling is all exposed so you guys can see what this thing looks like and know what kind of goes into building a network in your new construction home. Let's get started. Welcome to the Ethernet Blueprint, guys. My name is Tim Trich, and on this channel, we focus on helping people just like you build in a great network in your new construction home. Today's video, like I mentioned, we're gonna be taking a tour of one of my projects, and I wanna just share some of the concepts, some of the things I think about when I help customers design a network in their home. Uh, guys, I encourage you to stay and watch until the end of this video. We're gonna be talking about some future-proofing concepts that you can actually work into your new construction home as well to help you with those unknown things 20 years down the road that nobody knows what's gonna happen, yet you can put things in place today to help with that. So I encourage you stay tuned to the end of this video, like, follow, share, but let's go ahead and get started with the tour. So before we go through some of the things to think about in a house, I thought it'd be beneficial to get a little bit of a tour. This is gonna be a dime tour. It's not gonna to be too in depth. I'm not gonna walk around too much, more just spin in each of the areas. So in Nebraska, we have basements. Basements are really nice entertaining areas. A lot of times people will put their theaters down here or you know entertainment areas, pool tables and whatnot. Uh, this particular house, we're in the basement. Okay, there's gonna be a TV above the fireplace. There is a covered patio. And then beyond that, you can see the lake and the pool area. Okay, so we need to make sure we have Wi-Fi coverage in both spaces. And then it's a pretty just big room here, right? So um, open spaces make really nice, uh, are really easy to cover with Wi-Fi. So we're actually gonna put an access point in the, car, in, the, in the corner over there. You got a bedroom. And then this concreted area over here, and I will kind of come around because I think it's important for you guys to see this. This is actually a theater in the home. So they put it in concrete for a good reason. So it's 100% dark, it's sound deafening, so you can crank it and not have to worry about people upstairs bothering. So this is a challenge when it comes to Wi-Fi. So just one of the things we'll talk about later in the video when we get to this is if you plan on having something like this in your home where there's a lot of concrete, it can be a little tricky in these spaces. All right, let's go upstairs on the main level. Okay, guys, let's look at the main floor here. So again, a nice covered patio area. We have a fireplace with a TV above it here. Really grand high ceilings in this area. Okay, as we kind of look around and pan the camera around. This will be a kitchen area. Uh, right behind that is a garage and a hallway with a couple bedrooms. Uh, pretty simple, but one of the nice things about an open concept like this is they are fairly easy to cover with Wi-Fi, like I said, but we just have to make the signals overlap. So this is the main living room area. That is a little piece of the front door and then the steps that go upstairs to the second floor where we're gonna head next. Real quick, once you come upstairs, right, you're gonna kind of walk into this general open space right here. This elevated area here is gonna be an office with a lot of natural light. The attic is just above us. So this is the top of the house, but it's all exposed right now. And then as you go back here, you get into some second floor bedrooms. There's a, a game and activities room up here as well. So we just wanna make sure we have some good Wi-Fi coverage up here as we kind of put this thing together. Now, the first thing I thought we would look at in here is the network head in, right? Where are all the cables gonna go? You can see right there written on the board on the, board on the wall, it says rack. This is where we're gonna place a rack. You can see the low voltage cabling there and take note that they are all wrapped in plastic. Guys, this is a good thing to do in your house because as they start drywalling, all that drywall dust and painting, Finishing up the cabling work comes at the end. So this will protect your cables so you're not chipping paint off of them and all sorts of things. Now, they did decide to run coax in this house and that is actually housed in this box. That gives the homeowner the option to put cable TV if they'd like to or move to streaming. The next thing I wanna point out is this little tube right here. And we'll go outside and take a look at this tube. But this tube actually goes to the outside of the home and allows the homeowner to pay for internet service and have that fiber brought right to where the rack is located. It was one of our recommendations just to ensure that stuff can get where it needs to be. We choose where the network head end is, not the ISP. So we gave them a path to get here and that will just make their job and everybody's uh, way of getting internet to this house a much easier process. Okay, so I wanted to give you kind of a little inside scoop of what this looks like. So this right here, this hole is the other end of where the, the 
that tube that I showed you is at. This allows a cable provider from outside the house to pull fiber, coax, ethernet, whatever they decide to pull into that location very, very easily. Now this tube was provided uh, as well, which goes out to a pedestal that's out in front of the house. And basically the internet provider will pull fiber up through the tube and then just jump from here to there and right down to the rack. And then we have fiber right where we want it, which I believe this homeowner is able to get fiber. So this will make their job very, very easy. Even if you do not plan on wiring up access points in your house, you're gonna maybe use a mesh or just something simpler. You don't need a lot of cable run throughout your house. I think it is really important that you do give your internet provider a path to uh, wherever you plan on sticking your main router. You should be the one who decides. If you leave it up to them, guys, you run the risk of not having good coverage everywhere. Now, mesh systems are great. You can plug them in anywhere and expand them and use one, two, three, four pieces, whatever you need. And while I don't think that's as good as having a wired system, it is an option, but I still believe in any house, whether you wire it up to the gills or don't run any wires at all, you should give your network provider a path to get uh, to wherever you'd like to place that main router. All right, let's keep the tour going. Now, I'm gonna piggyback off that mesh conversation just a little bit here because this house is a perfect example of why a mesh system really wouldn't work. If you see this room I'm kind of pointing out right here, you'll notice that all the walls are encased in concrete. Okay, now this is gonna be a theater in the home. And so we've actually pulled a cable into that room. It's really dark, you won't be able to see it anyway. And there's no lights in this house. Uh, yet. So uh, you just can't take my word for it. We pulled an ethernet drop in there to be able to add an in-wall low profile uh, access point. But the reason for that is, is Wi-Fi is not going to go into this room very easy. That concrete specifically is a Wi-Fi blocker. So if they chose to do a mesh system in this house, they would have really had a difficult time getting Wi-Fi coverage specifically into that room. That concrete is very, very unforgiving for Wi-Fi. Even though in this house, there's gonna be a Wi-Fi access point, which let's just kind of go take a look at one here. This spot right here is that gray box, that single gang box is gonna be a Wi-Fi access point when it's all said and done. Even though it's very close to that room, that concrete room will block Wi-Fi the second you go in there. It's really thick. It's just very hard for Wi-Fi to pierce that. So. It's always a good idea to have, if you're gonna have a room like that, to make sure you have some kind of Wi-Fi presence inside the room and out, otherwise you're gonna see some signal blockage. Now, I'm gonna point out something else that really doesn't jive well if you plan on having a house like this with an outdoor entertaining area where a mesh system really does fail. Most mesh systems don't have any kind of an outdoor presence. You typically would have to set the unit, you know, maybe near a window or something like this and have it go outside. But the second you close up the doors and all that other stuff, your signal degrades. Well, in this house, we're actually gonna do outdoor Wi-Fi and just broadcast a signal out towards the lake. They could actually be fishing 20 yards out there and still be connected to their Wi-Fi. Let me show you where that's gonna be at. Now, this is the exterior of the home. And we're gonna have a TV up here. There's gonna be an outdoor TV for when you're in the pool, but right above it, that single line that's not in a gang box, it's just popping out of the house. You can see it's kind of sealed there, okay? That is gonna be our outdoor Wi-Fi that's gonna broadcast everywhere out here. So they'll be able to have good signal, run their Sono system, whatever they need to do when they're in the pool, there's gonna be a hot tub out here. So they will be able to enjoy Wi-Fi while outdoors that's tied to the network that is gonna be indoors. So it gives you that natural ability to kind of walk in and out of your home uh, as long as you're in a Wi-Fi coverage area and stay connected, which we really try to create for our customers when we design a system into a home. And look at that view. Okay, so for the next part of the video, I kind of want to just take a little tour of some TV locations and show you and talk about what we're thinking about in these situations. So if you look up here, this is a fireplace and above the fireplace, because they're going to mount the TV, is a single gang box. It has both a coax and a Cat6 cable to it, okay? So this allows us to have network connectivity um, behind the TV. Now we did this in every single TV location here. 
And the only exception is the one upstairs where we actually pulled an extra Cat 6 line behind the TV because they're gonna have a Sonos system in this house. And we're actually gonna physically connect the Sonos system so we can use Sonos Net to broadcast and be on the same network as well. So um, just kind of showing you guys what this looks like. It's not a difficult process. Whether you're pulling the cable yourselves or having, a, having your, um, electricians do it or whatever, which is what happened in this house. The electricians actually pulled the cable. There's not really a lot to it. You just gotta be able to give it a path. And it all okay. comes down and comes into this bundle here. The whole house runs to this location. And we're talking multiple things, right? We're talking more than just TVs. We're talking access points. We're talking cameras for outside. We're talking all sorts of stuff. And you can see the cables just kind of run through this house. Now our coding here in Nebraska is a little, you know, a little bit lenient and low voltage does not need to be in any kind of a conduit, which is nice, but you'll wanna make sure you know what your code is at your house. So here's another example of a box. It's gonna be for a TV. And again, it has a coax and a RJ40, or excuse me, a Cat6 cable. Now I wanna show you this too, guys. So what we did here was you can see that almost extra long length of cable lay in there which is going to this box. But then we have this Smurf tube going down, right? And that is actually gonna go down to this little single gang box down here. You can see where it pops out. What that allows you to do is use the cabling up top or use the cabling down below. Or if you had your, maybe your connection was down here because you wanted to be plugged into your Xbox and you wanted to run an HDMI cable up to your TV up there, okay? It just runs right through that little Smurf tube and you're right up. Very, very easy to do. You could do it very simply. Matter of fact, you, with this tube being as straight as it is, you probably could just drop the cable down without having to, having to even use a kind of pull string or anything. So uh, really, really handy if you're going to have a presence lower and up high, uh, or you like the option to be able to do either or. Guys, that flex tubing will really, really save the day. But you do have to think about it ahead of time and uh, sort of work it into your planning because this would be extremely difficult to add down the road. Now, some of you might be asking yourselves, how do you come up with this Wi-Fi point? How do you know where to put access points in a house like this? Do you just walk around and sort of try and pick a good place or how do you do it? And I'll first start off by saying there are some links in the description of this video and, and my other videos that take a much deeper dive in Wi-Fi planning um, and heat mapping and things of that sort. But basically, let me kind of just take a step back and kind of talk you through my process. Uh, the first and foremost, I try to stick um, wiring wherever there's going to be a TV. So one of the things I ask my, my customers or my clients and say is, let's talk about TV locations, right? We want to put Ethernet in those locations no matter what, or at least give a pathway like we uh, will talk about at the end of this video to be able to add wiring later. Secondly, we look at Wi-Fi, right? Everybody wants good Wi-Fi in their home. Everything that comes out nowadays seems to have a wireless connection, ovens and refrigerators and all sorts of crazy things connect to the internet with the internet of things, right? So we need good Wi-Fi coverage. So how do you really go about doing that? So I actually started with a two-dimensional drawing um, broken down by each of the floors of this house and was able to use a tool called Unified Design Center. It's a 100% free tool that Ubiquity gives that allows you to create heat maps where you actually drag and drop uh, access points onto the drawing. Once you have your scale and your walls drawn in that allow you to heat map and, and sort of pre-plan what the Wi-Fi is gonna look like in the house. Now, I do find it very, very important to take a walkthrough in a house uh, of some kind. Uh, it's really difficult um, to know you're gonna get it 100% right when you only see one angle of it. If you're just going off the drawing, there's things that could be missed. There's you know, maybe something in the wall that isn't displayed on that drawing. So it is nice to be able to get a walkthrough and actually say, oh, I had the access point there. I'm going to move it a little bit because of A, B, and C, right? Or, or whatnot, right? Windows stacked on top of windows, you can't see in a flat drawing. So things like that, um, you know, so typically they will change or be edited a little bit, but in most cases you can get pretty close by using um, a heat mapping tool such as Design Center. So that's actually what I did in this house. 
We started with that. We walked around, we looked at TV locations, we looked at any special needs where they were gonna need Wi-Fi. In this case, around the pool to be able to run a Sono-like system from your phone, you need good Wi-Fi outdoors, so we wanted to make sure we had some good coverage there. Now, we found that the theater system, for example, is encased in concrete, right? That is a unique challenge in the world of Wi-Fi, something that I think Mesh would really trip over. So it's one of those things where um, I'm glad we were able to do the walkthrough because if the customer or the client doesn't bring that to light, then it's easy to get missed and then there's something, you know, you don't have Wi-Fi in there or maybe you stuck Wi-Fi just out the door because it wasn't uh, described on the drawing correctly and, you know, Wi-Fi dies the second you get in there. So it's nice to be able to do the combination walkthrough and design planning, but that heat mapping tool is really where it's at. That's how you can kind of decide how many access points, how far your coverage goes, and you just simply do it by drawing in the wall. So if you're interested in doing that or learning more about that, guys, checks out the links in the description where I talk about that in a little bit more detail. Um, I have some courses that you can take where we just show you exactly step-by-step step so you guys can do the planning in your home. All right, guys, as promised, I wanted to talk about a couple things that you can do to help future-proof your home from the unknown. As you guys know, technology is rapidly changing and it makes it increasingly difficult for even guys like me who do this every day to really know, you know what the future holds, right? So what are things that you can do in your house to kind of be ready for those things so they don't get you down the road and your house becomes more and more uh, irrelevant? We'll call it like the intercom test, right? Old homes, a lot of old homes had intercoms put in them and then it just becomes kind of abandoned technology on the wall. The goal here is to help anybody building a home now to be able to not be stuck in old times because of the choices they made 20, 30 years prior. So let's get onto the tips and talk about things you can do to help with that. Okay guys, so my number one thing that I recommend doing in any home is to run some sort of tubing like that flex tubing from your network head end, okay? So whether that's in the basement like it is here, or maybe it's in your office, somewhere located in the home, maybe it's under a stairwell, whatever, run a tube from there all the way to the attic. That gives you the ability to add cabling at a later time. My personal experience with this is when I built my home, I did not wire it for cameras. I didn't add any cameras. All of a sudden, a year later, there were break-ins in the neighborhood. We needed to add some cameras to our home just to have that extra protection. But I did have a tube that went from my attic space or down to my head end. And so I was able to pull cables very, very easily to the eaves of my house. I recommend doing that in any house we go in. The tricky part is just basically finding a clear path from wherever your network head end, straight up as possible into your attic. You don't want a lot of bends because it's harder to get cables uh, that has through a tube that move, bends a bunch of times. So number one tip, run a tube of some kind as straight as possible from your network head end all the way to your attic to give you the flexibility of adding cables later. My second tip revolves around TVs and access points and cameras. Probably one of the number one questions I get asked is, is what type of cabling should I run in my home? Do I need something beefier than Cat6? Uh, should I run Cat6A, Cat7? I've even heard Cat8 run around or even fiber. And the truth of the matter is, is I don't really know. I think your home really dictates that. Now, my experience in this today says that being that Cat6 can do up to 10 gig for certain, distances, for certain distances, that a lot of people can get by with just Cat6. However, there are those homes or there are those people out there that just say, I don't wanna take that chance. And I can't say I blame you, technology changes all the time. So one of the things you can do is take that concept of what we just talked about a minute ago with running the flex tube up to the attic, but also apply that to your TV and access point locations, right? If you run flex tubing, which again, it's gonna add a little bit of cost, it's gonna add a little bit of planning because you want uh, nice clean bins as best as you can to be able to get a cable through that tube. But if you run the, to those locations in your home, it gives you the ability to upgrade your cabling later. Maybe today Cat6 works just fine, but 20 years from now, you need fiber for whatever technology exists. So by having those tubes in place, run to those pieces of equipment specifically, it allows you to upgrade them. Now take access points, for example. The access points we're installing in this house have a one gig port on them, right? They, they max out at one gig no matter what. However, new access points that are coming out with Wi-Fi 6E, Wi-Fi 7, and whatever else is around the corner, right? They're coming with larger ports. A lot of the 6E access points, specifically with Ubiquiti, have 2.5 gig 
ports on them. Now, Cat 6 can handle those speeds, but that's just an indicator of what's to come. Maybe your access points are gonna have 10 gig ports on them in the next 20 years, and because of distance limitations, you need something beefier. So by adding those pathways, um, it allows you to upgrade cabling to whatever you need. Fiber access points if you wanted to. Same thing with TV locations. Now, I wouldn't do it with all your TV locations, but specifically like the TVs that um, you would see like as technology changes, you would upgrade that TV, right? Maybe the outdoor TV doesn't get changed or a kid's bedroom TV doesn't get changed very often, but the main living room space, right? Having conduit run from your network head in to those locations um, also give you the ability to either pull an extra cable or change your cabling, whatever down the road. So that is something you can do, but it has to be planned and thought out during this part of the process. And remember, anything that you run that bends that you wanna put cables in later, try to keep the bends to a minimum. Even a 90 degree bend can be really hard for a fish tape or whatever to get through to you know, add cable later. So if you do have to do something with a lot of bends, make sure you include some kind of a pull string that you can just pull that cable through. All right, so tubing is a really, really good way to be able to future-proof your house for later. But one little asterisk I'll put out there, if you don't wanna put the tubing, you don't want that, you just want maybe just to protect yourself, um, uh, and, and the easiest way to do that is just to pull a beefier cable. That is also an option. You can pull Cat 6A, which is rated for 10 gig everywhere, Cat 7, which can, I think can do up to 40 gig up to certain distances, right? You can pull those cables uh, to your access points, to your main TV locations, to your camera locations. Um, you can pull those during the time of the build and maybe you grow into them, right? You're, you're, you're putting the beefier stuff in now, so you grow into it. So the choice is really up to you. Those are the recommendations I have in just about any home when people ask me that question is what can I do to ensure this house is gonna be relevant in 20 years, right? Those are the type of things I recommend and they give you a lot of flexibility because I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't have all the answers, right? We just don't know where technology is going to go. Um, we have to base it off previous trends, and that's bite, that bites us in the butt too. Someone comes up with something new, and all of a sudden, a lot of the stuff you were using previously becomes uh, irrelevant, which you know we never want, but it does happen. So just something to kind of think about to future-proof your home and hopefully make things run better so you have a relevant current home for the next foreseeable future. Okay, guys, there you have it. Thank you for taking this journey with me as we do a walkthrough of a new construction home and, and just kind of talk through some of the things we like to think about when doing the planning for this. I hope you guys found it beneficial. Um, like always, follow us uh, for more video like this. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll do my very best to answer it for you. Um, I hope I get to show you more of this project as we go down the road. Um, there's more to come, but we wanted to take advantage before the drywall got in uh, to kind of show you some of the things we think about as it pertains to TVs and Wi-Fi uh, so you can apply those to your new construction home. So thank you again, and we'll see you guys in a future video.